36 AU summit say that the conference, the facility and the services, as well as the issues raised at this year's summit, were successful and decisive for the future of the African continent. The summit was focusing on issues of human rights with a particular focus on women, which urges all citizens of the continent to take part in the development of the continent regardless of any form of discrimination. The conflict in Burundi also took centre stage. Our foreign editor, Sophie Mukwena, attended the summit. She now joins us in studio. Very good morning to you, Sophie, and welcome. Good morning, Elvis. Now, you were there, but before we get to the summit itself, Burundi took centre stage. What did you make of the discussions around Burundi? Indeed, the Peace and Security uh, Council focused its attention on the issue of Burundi. And uh, what came out there was that, uh, as you had earlier on, a decision that uh, the 5,000 troops will not be sent to Burundi, but rather a strong delegation or observers will be sent to Burundi to get first-hand information on the ground, what's happening, but also to try to bring parties together to a solution or to start the negotiations and the dialogue. But there are concerns that currently the mediator, uh, President Museveni, Ugandan president, is busy with elections. Uh, you are aware that before end of the year, uh, Uganda will go to the polls. Therefore, he doesn't have much time to focus on issues around Burundi. But there was an agreement that they will send the observers, that the UN and the AU, of course, to ensure that uh, they continue to find a solution mm -hmm. to the problem. But I also spoke to the Foreign Affairs Minister of Burundi after Burundi was elected to the Peace and Security Council, who was upbeat and saying that they will make a meaningful input in the Peace and Security Council. Therefore, that speaks to the fact that there's no way we'll see 5,000 troops in Burundi mm -hmm. anytime soon. So a political solution might be reached. As you heard earlier on mm -hmm. Sharon Riceby's uh, uh, report, where he pointed out that uh, the UN spokesperson says uh, there is no way they will engage in military, but mm -hmm. rather they will prefer a political solutions. So therefore, there will be discussions. Mm -hmm. Now, besides Burundi, which stood out, but what else stood out for you in the conference as a whole? Well, I think the revival of the NEPAD. Mm -hmm. The revival of the APRM, that is African Peer Review Mechanism, with President Kenyatta now being head of APRM, but also our own Eddie Maloka being the CEO of the APRM. And you know very well that Eddie Maloka has been involved with uh, issues of international relations in the country, has been there for quite a long time, is quite lewd in terms of issues and the program and the vision and the mission of the continent, mm -hmm. what we want to achieve uh, in 2063, but also the issues of NEPAD and issues of uh, APRM. And I'm hoping that having President Kenyatta at the helm of APRM, mm -hmm. a young leader, a very energetic leader, uh, we will see a change. And uh, there were pleasing reports that even Sudan, that is Khartoum, has actually agreed that it will subject itself for assessment very soon, which speaks to how PRM will make impact in ensuring that we continue to ensure that we strive to be a better continent on issues of democracy and human rights. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to interview some very interesting uh, uh, and important uh, figures at the summit. Tell us about that. Well, I spoke to the Foreign Affairs Minister of Sudan, Khartoum, mm. where we spoke about the issue of the ICC. And he was forthright in terms of their position that uh, Africa should not cooperate with the ICC, but also the fact that they are pushing that the African court must now operate so that when you have these problems in the continent of human rights violation, People can be taken to the African court. But uh, when my colleague, Vuyong Vogo, the contributing editor, spoke to the uh, judge of the African court, he was concerned that uh, leaders or political uh, figures are not supporting the institution. Many countries still have to ratify the protocol. Therefore, the court cannot function if uh, countries are not supporting it, but also not signing the protocol. Therefore, I think uh, it will be important for now to ensure that uh, the new chair that is charged mm -hmm. ensure that all countries do sign the protocol so that this court can function. But also the AU Commission chair, Dr. Nkosa Zanatla Minizuma, between now and July, the next summit, she must also ensure that the countries do take the issue of an African court seriously. Mm -hmm. Now, 
How was the reaction from President Mugabe's remarks in terms of the UN reform? Well, uh, President Mugabe didn't disappoint those who like his body language, but also his speech and, and how he uh, deliberate issues and how he communicate messages. He was forthright that the UN must reform, particularly the Security Council, and that came, that came at a time where many, of course, uh, were saying that this issue must be high on the agenda of the of the AU and uh, he was very clear and he got a standing ovation because many countries believe that it can be business as usual. This multilateral body that was formed to bring peace and stability in the world mm -hmm. some years ago, we still have the same setup in terms of decision making. The irony is that you have these five permanent members who are not even signatories of the Rome stage, but they are the ones who send countries to the Hague. I mean, really? Mm -hmm. What is that? But also, when you look at conflict, Africa is affected. We're talking Burundi, we're talking South Sudan, but none of the African countries are permanent member or permanent members of the mm -hmm. uh, Security Council. How can you speak or talk about peace and security in the world when we are not even represented in that mm -hmm. particular institution? Therefore, I think the call from the African group that there should be two permanent seats for Africa in terms of countries. That's the issue that will be debated later. But what is critical is to ensure that, you know, the problem with Africa that saddens me in all forms, it's this thing of not us speaking in one voice. Mm -hmm. This thing of the francophone, the anglophone, it might be soccer, sports, education, anything. We are always divided. But for the first time, leaders are united in Africa, saying we must get the two seats. But the issue of uh, who will be representing Africa, we'll discuss that later. Mm -hmm. For me, that is a, big, a breakthrough. Now, in order for the African Union to be financially uh, viable in the future, members need to contribute. Was that part and parcel of the discussion in order to, to, to sort of stable the ship to get to that vision of 2063? Indeed, that was one of the important issues that was debated there, because you we will continue to be subjected to the donors' uh, interest and their visions and their interests and their position as long as they are giving us funds. But if the African Union wants to be independent, to take decisions independently in the interest of the Africans or in the interest of the continent, they must ensure that they contribute funds mm -hmm. so that the institution can be independent. Sophie McQuenna, thank you so much for your time and joining us here in studio. That was our foreign editor joining us here in studio. Sophie McQuenna, she was there at the summit.